we're gonna make this cute little necklace here and we're gonna to emphasize today that it's not always how fancy the swirls and crazy wire wrapped little designs are as much as sometimes you can just pick some really pretty color patterns or really pretty stones and just go from there so I'm just gonna to try to keep this simple this is 22 gauge antique copper and uh, blah, blah, blah. let's start with this little um, carnelian uh, I think it's a six millimeter bead at the top it might be a little bit more than that I'm just cutting off a few inches and I'm really not going to do anything fancy. I'm just going to um, figure out if it has a hole drilled through it or not. There we go. All right, so just real simple. Just bring it to the middle of the wire. Weird. This camera is so weird. There we go. Okay, just give it a little loop and a loop. This wire is so soft, you can just do it with your fingers. But um, every time I make a loop now, I'm finding it's easier to anchor it. If you roll it with your round nose pliers like this and then just wrap it around itself one time real tight like that. And now that loop is anchored and you can do the next one. Look at that, this camera is a weird, so it gets in total focus and then it's like, no, nope, I'm gonna switch. All right. Now I'm just gonna wrap this around that side and this around that side. So from any angle it'll look cute. Now I'm just gonna Wrap it around till I run out of wire and then just tuck the sharp end into loop. Real simple. There we go. Pretty cute. Let's put that down. Next, this is about a one and a half centimeter um, mother of pearl bluish gray piece. I love this piece. It, alone, it could make a really pretty necklace pendant, but. Um, let's get about this time. We're gonna take a. This is the only part we're gonna put a fancy design on. It's not gonna be crazy fancy. Just it's a little something. Um, so we'll give ourselves a whole 14 inches, maybe. So that like 30 centimeters. And um, let's put it through again to the middle of the wire. Decide which side you want to face up. I like all this fancy stuff going on here, but. That's kind of dreamy and moody on that side. I like that too. So we'll we'll go with this. We'll fold this up, fold this down. Again, we'll make our two loops. The only time you don't want to make two loops, well, you can, um, is if you're uh, if it's a very bottom piece and you don't need a bottom loop. But sometimes it's fun to just leave the loop anyway. It adds like an extra design. And sometimes you can, the last minute, you might decide you want to hang something on it. Maybe a couple links of chain or a charm or something. Anyway, so we got our two loops here. I'm gonna make them roll them a little bit smaller. And then I'm gonna do that thing where they wrap around themselves. And as that happens, the stone might flip and just flip it back, no big deal. The same with this one. Okay, now we're gonna take, fold this over, fold this over. Normally I would put this swirl right in the middle, but this time I'm going to put it down in the bottom. So you can place the swirl wherever you want it. And I'm just slowly I'm pressing it, pressing it flat against the stone. I've done this swirl a thousand times, but maybe you're new, so welcome. And um, I'm just pulling one side around, the next side around. They're chasing each other around and around and they slowly make this really pretty swirl. You can go around as many times as you want and then you can separate the strands or bring them together. This time we're gonna bring them together and I'm gonna press, hold that right there to make a loop with our fingernail. We're gonna come back like that and do it again right here. Come back, do it as many times as we want. Do it, give us a little bit of a smaller one at the top and 
to make these uh, curves really neat. You squeeze them tighter, you get your fingernail in there, you pull them tighter and tighter. I feel like that makes them look kind of cool. And then we're going to come around the top. Oh, I should have given myself a, a bigger loop at the top so I could have a, more of a scarf. But anyway, pretend the top is a face. These two wires are scarf. Scarf it around. Get it around a few times. You can stack the um, stack the wraps as they come around, but I don't have much to work with here, so I'm going to cut it right there. You want to cut it halfway across the loop so that you can tuck the two ends into that little bowl that's formed. Now be very careful here. You don't want to cut the wrong part or, you know, ruin the whole piece and then you got to start over. Not really ruin it. You just kind of give yourself more practice, but you would have to start over that part. Um, now see, this is, you want to be really particular when you're tucking sharp ends. This is something, people hate tucking sharp ends when they start out. And it's something you just got to force yourself to do it over and over and then you'll get so good at it that like, you won't think about it. I don't think about it anymore. But I am talking you through it here. Why? This does not want to, it wants to focus on that bead down there. It doesn't want to focus on this right here. Um, So I'm going to cut it again because I want to get these to tuck just right. If they're too long, they're not going to tuck right. If they're too short, you're not going to have enough leverage to get them in. So you want to really, if you have to sit there and cut off half a millimeter three times, do not feel bad. That's part of learning. Eventually you'll get it to eyeball it and you'll be able to see just where to cut it. But this really thin 22 gauge sometimes... You know, got to give it a few shots. So here we have our pendant, if the camera wants to show you. Ah, thank you, camera. So there's our pendant. I'm still going to mess with it some more. I want these swirls to come down a little bit more. I want that to be more of a diagonal. Turn, Try to turn them a little bit like that. And there we go. I kind of like that. that's better. I'm pulling them back and forth, <laughs> but that's a little bit more what I wanted. Okay, now got these two parts. Fun. Take this little, this is like a little tiny square. It's like half a centimeter long. And it's like this pretty little dyed purple jasper. And it's a bead, it has a hole drilled through it. The defi definition of a bead is a small stone with a hole drilled through it. If you're ever searching online, if you wanted to have the hole drilled through it, put in bead. If you want it to not have a hole, if you want it to have a flat side and then a, a round side, like a stone that you would set with the flat side, you know, down and then the round side where you do all your stuff. That's called a cabochon. And so bead or cabochon. But um, also if you're searching for stones, sometimes a pendant or necklace stone. Pendant is better. Just different keywords you can put in. So this guy, I'm just going to do the same thing. I'm going to Take a little bit of this wire I have left over from the last one I cut off. And this is all 22 gauge anti-copper. Do the same thing. I'm going to go. All right, you know what? Maybe I should put these two together. This last little jade four millimeter bead. Let's see. Should we, we put those together like that? Let's see how that's going to look all together. Do, 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 do. Or should we have them hanging as completely separate? Yeah, that's too much. Um, pendant is going to be so long. Um, I'm going to put these together. So I'm going to stack them. There we go. Nice and tight. Let's make our loop. Wrap the loop around itself. Now this, um, I don't have 
much wire here to play with it, so I might just wrap this around itself and scarf it on its own little loop. And then this next little one right here, that's a little bit more wire. I might wrap that up to the top. I think that's what I'm going to do. You could also roll this into a little swirl and just stick that somewhere. That would be pretty. I was contemplating doing that. Maybe I still will. Because that's different. Let's see. Yeah, why not? That'll be cute. So making a swirl, if you're still new to this, is you just make a little tiny... Little tiny curve. You carefully pinch it. And then you hold it very tightly on the side and roll it. You have to hold it tightly because if you don't, you'll slip and scratch the swirl. And you just keep repositioning it and rolling it. And rolling it. And as long as it's not too big and sticking out, you can kind of tuck a swirl in any particular place. And it's kind of cute. Now, as I said, I have just enough wire here to, I think I can wrap that up to the top. Let's see. So I had just enough to wrap it once around that little bead and then I'm just coming straight up the back and I'm gonna wrap it once around that loop and that'll be it. So that's a cute little piece. It could be an, like an earring by itself. I think I might take a couple more of these and just make matching earrings. You guys should do that. So if this was just, if it had an end right there that we could open it, then we could open this loop like a jump ring and connect it that way. Might want to turn it a quarter turn so it's, this still faces forward. But it isn't, it's closed and, and the, you know, the sharp ends are wrapped all over the place. So we need to use jump rings to connect them. Jump rings are good because uh, it's a stronger base metal and that keeps all the connections stronger. Sometimes you can use two jump rings because that keeps stuff from rolling more. You can use two or three or four, however many you can fit, five. Um, but sometimes if you're not good at closing jump rings, it's good to double them up just in case. But I think, I don't know, I might use two. We'll see. But let's put this cute little guy together and... Give him a home with some jump rings. I'm gonna use teeny tiny little jump rings. Remember, always buy jump rings in the same color as the wire you like to use most, and try to buy jump rings in multiple different sizes so that you have for different projects. You'll never, you'll be surprised. There's a time when I never thought I would use extra big ones or extra small ones, and I've used all of them, and it's good to hold on to the ones I thought I wasn't gonna use. Anyway, enough of me talking, here's some jump rings. Aren't they so cute? And this cute little, I also got, also try to get chain in the same color as what you're doing if you like to use chain. You can always use, trick is you can always use a black leather or black uh, cotton woven cord if you don't want to have all different color metal chains to match. But in this case, this works really nicely. But as you can see, I'll show you real quick. Uh, Black cord would work nice too on that. Actually, black cord would look really nice. But I'm gonna stick with the chain for now. If the customer wants to change it, then we'll do what they like. When you're attaching your jump rings, if you have little fancy little doodads in the front that don't show up in the back, make sure you attach the jump rings so everything is facing the way you want it to. Sometimes that takes a couple tries and sometimes you gotta readjust or put a new jump ring on. And this particular, like this little tiny part right there, I had to move it a little with my fingernail. Okay, Let's attach it to the chain. Voila.